five thirty, so I will call the meeting of public works to order. I will start with roll call. Alderperson Pierce here. Alderperson Heidemann here. Alderperson Rust present. Alderperson Ramey is excused. We will start with pledge allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All righty. Uh, we'll go to number four introduction. If we can get some guests here, so I'll give you a new uh, introduction quick. Uh, I'm all person Dean Decker from the uh, District 6 and the chair of the committee. Uh, Alderman Heidemann, 10th District. Alderman Russ, District 8 Vice Chair. Mike Holmes, Department of Public Works. Do you want to step in before I keep going? I think okay. last time you got ended up on That's okay. Okay. <laughs> Liz Majerus, legal. Aaron Grohl, City Engineer Interim. Tracy Burnett, Community Member. Steve George, Community Member. Uh, Joel Colstein, Community Member. Pam Pender, Sheboygan Bank Company. Joel Keeper, Sheboygan <laughs> Okay. Joel Curlin, DPW, uh, Parks and Forestry. Stacy Wessel, JAG Administrative Clerk. Heather Burke, DPW Business Manager. Kevin Jump, DPW Engineering. And I'm Alder Peterson uh, from the third district. Okay. Uh, we'll go to number five, approval of minutes for March 26, 2024. I move to approve. Second. So made and second. Any discussion on those minutes? All in favor? Aye. aye. Any opposed? Chair sure, votes well, aye. Those are approved. Uh, number six, RO number 130, 2324, submitting a communication from the Sheboygan Event Company asking for waiving of park and equipment rental fees for the Coho Derby. Is this, is this Kevin or is this Joe? This will be Aaron. Aaron, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so the submittal was requested for waiving of the fees, and uh, the ordinance states uh, that the fees are uh, typically required, however, they can be waived. Um, the initial discussion was well, um, this is uh, a, a project or um, a community event in which. The DPW staff needs to be in attendance and perform certain duties, and there's you know, expenses to that, and that's why you um, ask for the permit for permit. <laughs> um, so that's why we said I initially said, "Yep, let's let's keep the, keep the fees in place." Um, and since then, there's correspondence to ask to have it waived. Um, what I will say is that uh, in the in the past, there have been some circumstances in which fees are waived, but is it very often? I can't speak to that personally because I wasn't here and I don't know about all of those uh, all those circumstances. What I can also say is that there is a event that same weekend. It's Coho Derby. Excuse me. It's uh, Bratwurst Days uh, weekend as well. So th that event will also be asking for permits and it'll, uh, will require city staff to assist with um, the events then as well. So. Uh, there are um, expenses that are required for city staff, uh, whether it's Coho Derby or whether it's Broad Days or the following weekend, which is the marina, excuse me, the boat races. And uh, those are all expenses that the city incurs. So um, that being said, um, the uh, all of the items that are listed as far as the potential to have the fees waived, uh, they do meet all of those requirements. So there are four requirements, uh, and they do meet those requirements to have those fees waived. So I'll expand on that. The four requirements that Director Grow is referring to are established in our municipal code. The first is that the event is open to the general public without an admission fee. The second is that it is not using park rental as a fundraiser. The third is that it has provided good cause as to the financial hardship that would be caused by requiring the payment of the full fee. And fourth is that they have established why the event benefits the city and its citizens, such that the park rental fee, which is set in a manner to reflect the cost incurred by the city as a result of the rental, should not be charged. Um, so long as the event does not significantly impact city departments, services, operations, and activities. And then the final comment that I will offer is that it need not be an all or nothing decision. You may choose to waive the fees entirely, you may choose to reduce them, or you may choose to deny the request. Thank you. 
Okay, I guess um, I'll start with a couple of questions. I'm sure the rest of you have questions. Um, I, I, I know we did do this once before for the Juneteenth celebration of their first time. That means that that was going to be a one-time type of thing also. We, we just to get them off the ground. Um, I guess my question is, is what are we talking about as far as the fees? What are we waiving? How much is it going to be? So um, Heather put together estimated costs for two different permit fees, and one of them will be for approximately $1,200, and the other one for $2,900. So we're talking about a total of $4,200. Okay, I, I, have, I have a question. So. Um, in the past, when they had the COVID derby, they didn't pay fees. The city didn't require them to pay fees in previous COVID derbies. Are you asking, asking, I'm asking you? Yeah. So I can't speak for what was happening at the wharf because it was at the wharf. So I don't know what, okay. what, what if they rented anything from you. It's just it hasn't been at D Land Park in 20 years, maybe ish. Oh, okay. And I mean, if, we're kind of just asking for the green space and the shelter is not necessarily the park equipment or the rental equipment. So, I mean, if you guys wanted to, wanted to do that, that'd be amazing. But, excuse me, just the grass and the shelters, which shouldn't impact the city employees as much, uh, that'd, be, that'd be greatly appreciated. As far as the, uh, the Browers days, do we waive any fees for them? No. No. The only reason we can do this is because it's a, a brand new right event. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Exactly. So what do DPW workers have to do for this, you know, on the day of? Can I ask for your support yep. on that? Yep. So um, leading up to it, there's more what we have to do, <clears throat> and it's going to be a, a, a huge juggle between broad days and sure. them now, and then in another week, the right. boat races. but. Every all the equipment that they've requested, we deliver. Okay, we deliver that. So um, I like what he's saying that maybe take that off the the request because that is real. That is impacting our department. That does impact our time. Um, that's something that's you know you can really put a value on. Um, and then the day of um, the day of, we basically are not there like Fourth of July. We're there all the time. We're dumping garbage. We're doing, you know, all that stuff. This is their celebration. They're responsible for taking care of their garbage, getting it in the dumpsters and stuff like that. We basically do our normal come along and check the bathrooms. Okay. Every day. All right. Thank you. You have no way of knowing the costs incurred by the city for doing this, then, like for your for the for service. our services. Yeah. Well, I mean, I know it. No, we, it's just do. part of the cost that we put on delivery of the. Equipment. So just to, just to clarify, as far as the, ex, the expenses laid out here, um, five days of the community center, community center, five days of the D-Land green space, and five days of the Richardson shelter uh, at different unit prices that are required for the permits, uh, those all come up to be $2,901.25. Nine hundred and one dollars and twenty-five cents. That's for the green space, as you're as you're speaking. If you go to looking at the the um, cost for the equipment, um, it is well, my computer's locking up on me. It was twelve hundred dollars for the equipment, and I think there was fifty park benches. I don't know if you have it in front of you, my I don't have it in front of me, but it was one thousand two hundred and sixty dollars and seventy three yeah. cents, and it currently comprises um, various combo tables, straight tables, and snow fencing. And that's part of the equipment cost. Yes, so yes. the equipment cost is the um, reflects the delivery of said equipment and the collection of it. How many people do you plan on having uh, attend this? Do you have any idea? We we don't we're it's it's going to be three days so Friday Saturday and Sunday that the event's going on um, we're hoping to have somewhere around eight thousand between the three days. Are you going to be having bands and things like that? Or? We'll have uh, we have five different bands that we've booked right now that'll start. We'll have a band Friday night, three or three on Saturday and two on Sunday, five or six. 
I guess my, 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 my comment, I guess I am concerned about them being going the same weekend and having a, the, the kind of stress on Joe's staff that it's going to put with having both, both events going on to, to, you know, take care of Broward's days, taking care of both events, you know, and that's a, you know, the, the expense of, of that alone. I mean, you're going to be bringing in probably more overtime, I'm guessing, than what you would normally do because there is two events. So, so do you, Steve? Sure, go ahead. So do you, you just want the land, you don't need the rental stuff now? Is that what you're saying? No, we do need the rental stuff, but we were asking for the waiver on the land. On the we'll pay for the, the rental tables and um, okay. edges. All right. And I'm fine with it, whatever is decided. Maybe something to think about um, with the land. I'm, again, it's not all or nothing, but um, these celebrations do take a a pretty good beating on the turf. Just uh -huh. yeah. Joel. Yeah. Is there? Can we put something there that if they if they wreck something in that park, they have to fix it? That's already in there. Yep. Huh? It's already in there. Okay. All special event organizers sign on on the application that they assume the the responsibility of fixing any damage. Okay. <clears throat> but I don't believe that we've held them to. A standard of fixing turf damage. I think that's just something that we bundle in the cost of doing business. I, I I don't know that we ever have, but like if you know it was just really rainy and they took a big piece of equipment and really rutted things up, I I always thought we could. We can. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but I'm just thinking, you know, like if right. there was a you know some extra wear by the bathroom line or by the beer line, we probably wouldn't. Right now we got to aerate, reseed. We've never charged for that, but um, there's been a couple of times for broad days where I was really close to doing some charging. <laughs> yeah. I guess that's, you know, my, I guess my opinion is, is that, you know, how, how that the fact that broad days was off for a year and they're kind of just restarting also, right. you know, how do we, because if we sub do something here, are they going to come back? Are they going to come and say, hey, we're restarting too, because we just, you know, yeah. we took a year off and we're, we're kind of regrouping and things like that. So I don't know. I, One of the differences, I, I see where, where your concern is, sure. and anybody who has greater knowledge can step in here, but I think that the Coho Derby is transitioning from organization to organization, yeah. okay. and the Brat Days is the same Four organization. Chases. They just took a pause. Okay. So it is different. You don't really have to worry about them being treated the same as them. Okay, that's a concern. And you know, per your letter, it, you know, it's a startup, com a startup nonprofit, and JC yeah. certainly is well established. Yeah. For so you know, certain differences there as well. Any, any thoughts on this? Anybody? I, well, I would entertain to give them some type of a break to get this thing going. Um, uh, and I understand the fact that it's on the same weekend as something else. Yeah, that, that creates a problem for us. But again, we don't want to deter them, uh, discourage yeah. them from having it in the city of Sheboygan. And uh, so if I think if they're willing to pay for the, all the, the tables and everything else, I'm fine with that. I'll make a motion that we waive the fees. So what you're saying is you'd waive the fees for all but the $1,200 for the tables? Right. right. All the equipment they're going to pay for, they already said they'd pay for that. I would second that motion. Okay. Motion to be seconded. Uh, any other discussion on that? Any other thoughts? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Uh, Chair votes aye also. I think we uh, I would be comfortable with splitting the fee for the whole thing. That's my opinion. If there's anyone else that's making a different motion, I would be comfortable with the total fee cut in half with everything. So the 29 and, you know, that would be more of a... So look, that's still a break. It's so, a, it is a break, yeah. yes. I, I'd be more comfortable with that. make that motion? I, uh, sure. We already voted on it. Right, so the first motion yeah. fails. Yes. So now we're back motion. to the original request. And if, if someone else would like to make a different motion, they would be able to. 
I'll make so, a, yeah, go ahead. I'll make a motion that we split the fees then, or split the, the cost of the expenses down the middle. Okay. And I'll then second. for clarity, for record keeping, are the fees that you're proposing to split in 50-50, is that specific to equipment, facilities, or both? Both. I'll second that. Okay. Motion to make the second. Any other discussion on that? All those in favor? Aye. aye. Any opposed? Chair votes aye on that. It is passed. So, okay. <laughs> All right. Number seven, resolution number 199-2324, resolution authorizing a professional services agreement between the city of Sheboygan and Kapur and Associates Incorporated for services related to the tax incremental district 21 KID 21 Commerce Street reconstruction project and an amendment in the 2024 KID 21 budget to cover the associated costs. Thank Kevin. you. Yes. Okay, so this is looking at the old Mayline property within KID 21. Um, looking at what we're going to do with rerouting, rebuilding Commerce Street um, with David and Ryan retiring, engineering just doesn't have the capacity to do this anymore. So the decision was made to select Kapoor to do the roadway utility design for the city as part of this redevelopment of this TID area. This would be like the straightening out the. So we'd be coming from Wisconsin Street, yeah. down to Penn. Down, yeah. yeah. There's options mm -hmm. looking at kind of kind of coming right down there. where the trail is a kind little bit, evening it out with that other intersection, so it's more of a straight intersection. Yeah. Okay. okay. Questions? Oh, well, this comes out of the TID expense, right? Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> I moved to approve. Second. Motion is made and seconded. Uh, any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. aye. Any opposed? Chair votes aye. That is approved. Okay, number eight. Direct referral resolution number 202-2324, resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into a state municipal financial agreement with the state of Wisconsin Department of Transportation for a pavement resurfacing project, <clears throat> Washington Avenue, South Taylor Drive to South Business Drive, and South Business Drive, Washington Avenue, to 0.13 miles north of Wilson Avenue. Thank you. So this one, the Wisconsin Department of Transportation reached out to us earlier this year and told us that Washington Avenue from, it would really be somewhere here closer to the Starbucks where the newer pavement ends, all the way to South Business, and then I believe it's the northbound lanes only coming up to Wilson, or just short of Wilson Avenue. So they are proposing to do a mill and overlay project in that corridor. This also lines up with a 2026 project in the capital improvement program. So we wouldn't, we would end up delaying our project and then letting DOT pay for this. Right now, it's only 25% of the design costs that the city would incur. The full construction cost is on DOT in, in, in its current scope. But as we move forward, that scope could change. So this resolution is authorizing the mayor to sign the agreement so that we can begin scoping with DOT. So I think DOT pay for it instead of us. Correct. We like that. <laughs> we like that a lot. We always like that. We always like that. Any questions for anyone? I move to approve. Second. Motion is made and seconded. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. aye. Any opposed? Chair votes aye. That is approved. Okay, number nine. Direct referral resolution number 204 2324, resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into a contract with BMD Concrete Innovations LLC for the construction of the 2024 sidewalk program. Thank you. So this is a our annual sidewalk program, $200,000. 
is what was budgeted. Contract came in at call it, you know just over one hundred fifty eight thousand dollars, or just under one hundred fifty eight thousand. Same thing we do every year. We, you know, reach out to the property owner. Our property owners reach out to us. We schedule the work, get it done over the summer. Where is BMB Concrete? Is that something? They're actually from Winnicani. Questions? Is there a specific location? I, I apologize. I don't understand all this. So, is there a specific location that this? Applies to, or is it just kind of a it's, general? Any, it's so, anywhere citywide. Property owners typically contact us. We put them on the list, and okay. They're actually, so if you so go to the pairs of the if side, if you go to the bottom, it tells you where each of those sidewalks are. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Also, if it can be even reported by other citizens, they correct there's bad sidewalks in the city. People can report them. In. Like that. Thank you. Now, do I know where Concrete Sidewalk 6 ISF is? No, but it tells me that's what it is. <laughs> I believe that that's all mapped out on the right. city's GIS system. Yes. So if you had okay. specific questions, no, you I just was curious on what the, how this works. So thanks. I move to approve. I'll second. Motion's made second. Any, any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Chair votes aye. That is approved. Okay. Next meeting date, it says either 23rd, but Heather says it's not. <laughs> will probably be April 30th is what we're thinking of. Okay. And I am looking for a motion. I move to adjourn sine die. Sine die. I'll second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. aye. You're a dream. Thank you.